Well, when we first started uh, the band, um, it was uh, we had a slightly different lineup, and um, we had this guy called Andrew Mears uh, singing as well as Yanis, and um, he he went off to, to concentrate on his other band, but um, he came up with the name. I think at the time we were quite, you know, young, full of energy, sort of six, seven years ago, uh, before uh, before uh, the tour sort of. Lifestyle set in so much. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know if we'd strictly be young horses anymore. I think, <laughs> I think we'd be like yeah. sort of old, old nags. We used to be young horses and we've aged rapidly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Probably some animals. Yeah, uh, uh, giraffes. The giraffe. giraffe yeah. I like red pandas. I think they're very cute. Depends so much on the type of zoo. Yeah, I've been to some really nice zoos where it does feel like. The animals are sort of having a good time. Okay. Yeah. But uh, historically, uh, they've been pretty awful places. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not nice to go to a small sort of sad zoo where you've got like some sad raccoons or a sad tiger who's yeah. got no friends and it's... The saddest similar. animals are usually the chimps, I find. Yeah. They, they look at you and you know, you know what they're thinking and they know what, you th what you're thinking and it's a, it's a thoroughly unpleasant exchange. Yeah. Yeah. He probably, I think Jack likes football more than anyone else in the band. Yeah. He used to play, didn't he? Yeah, I, I used to play when I was when I was younger, and then I got uh, a knee condition when I was about fourteen, which meant I had to stop. But um, yeah, no, we like football. We just don't really get the chance to follow it because we're always travelling, so it's really hard to uh, yeah. keep on top of the scores and that. Kind I think of it's safe to say none of us are like big football fans at all. Yeah, and I personally don't like football. <laughs> But only because when I played it as a young child, I was, I was very bad at it, so I became very bitter. I don't know, I think there's probably hooligans in music as well. I think we're probably pretty lucky with not having very many hooligan yeah. fans. Um, but, you know, I, I think that not all football fans are hooligans either. I think, um, I mean, over the years, we've definitely met a lot of um, people that, that have come to our shows that are really big you know, football fans. I don't know if I've yet met a hooligan, though. No. <laughs> I'm too far back. They I was nearly hit by a bottle that, that Jimmy threw, that the guitarist <laughs> threw a few days, only a couple of weeks ago. He was doing some spinning. He'd, he'd lost the plot. He'd gone a little bit insane. And it started spinning towards me, and the, the beer was coming out of it, and everything slowed down. Fortunately, gravity took over, and it sort of landed a couple of feet short. Um, Jimmy's been hit by quite a few things from the crowd. Yeah. Coins. Coins, plastic bottles. I don't. We've never been hit with a glass bottle. No, thank God. People are very passionate about music. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends. Like, uh, you know. I I have been passionate in the past, and I've I've three things before I've been seeing bands, but that was a long time ago. To a band. To a band. Which band? I'm not telling you. <laughs> it was so funny. It oh, was awful. New York. Yeah, I can't yeah, tell you. Yeah, it was disgraceful behaviour. I was, I was incredibly drunk, <laughs> and I hated the band. Yeah, I mean, there's always constantly, there's the daily suffering from about, I don't know, when you get up until about four o'clock, I think. Um, I mean, out of the, out the band, probably three out of five of us is going to be hung over every day, um, which is just one of those things. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's cool. We're, we're kind of... We're not, we're not the most, like, ridiculous partying band as, as far as the other bands we've met. There, there have been a few we've toured with over the years that we've felt like we can't, can't go on touring with this band. We're going to die. They're going to kill us. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's definitely uh, an unusual life. Well, it's an unusual life, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's... It's really it's, hard to... Uh, it's also balanced that with, with the crushing on mundanity of uh, travel and hotels so um, I, th I think that's the problem is, is that because you have these long periods of inactivity when kind of the rock and roll lifestyle does present itself everyone just goes for it yeah. guns blazing which can be quite destructive yeah. but we haven't really experienced that much of it we really haven't Age of Empires 2 Age of Empires 2 <laughs> I haven't played that for years <laughs> uh, Minesweeper Oh yeah, you were addicted to that, weren't you? Mm. At the moment I'm using Instagram way too much and I'm kind of attached to it and I hate myself for it. It's, it's such a cliche. Yeah, whenever we go for dinner with Jack, he sits at one end of the table just like this on his phone. <laughs> Sometimes giggling to himself, or just like... <laughs>
It's <laughs> great. It's really cool. It's really fun. I think it's it's good in that the exposure that you can as as a music maker or an artist or whatever you are, like you've got these infinite amount of different outlets for channeling, like you know, just to get your work out there or to network with other people. So in that way, I guess it's good. But at the same time, and you know, I'm guilty of this as well in that it it really like shits on the mystique of a band. You know, when I was a teenager. I used to have these records and, you know, the closest I'd come to kind of knowing anything about the bands that I loved was look, flicking through the booklets inside the record or to buy, buy Kerrang! or Enemy or Wire or whatever magazine it was and re read about what they're saying in interviews. Whereas now, you know, you've got people on, on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, Instagram, Vine or whatever, just putting up photos of their lunch every day, um, you know. It's Pink. demeaning to both parties. I think it's demeaning to the band, but also to the fans. I don't yeah. even think they appreciate that, but it just degrades the whole thing. But yeah. um, social networking is just it's just a fact of life nowadays. I don't think it's even worth having that much of a opinion. Yeah. I, I think you can, if you have a problem with it, then maybe like work to, to persuade other people to change their use of social media. But it's like, it's like arguing with the telephone or the television. Yeah. yeah. On tour, you so it's we've got such an active lifestyle, and um, I mean, playing drums especially like I'm sort of jumping up and down for 90 minutes every night. So when I get home, if I if I don't make a conscious effort to do something like cycling or playing football or just some sort of exercise, I just get I start feeling really unfit because. I'm so used to doing all this exercise and it just stops when I get home. So I'm just like, right, I need to get out on the bike. I like to, to cook. I, th I think all of us um, like to just kind of like experience domesticity to the full. Like just being in my house, kind of moving things around, looking out the window. <laughs> That's basically how I spend my days. Yeah. It's the opposite of being on tour. Probably lasagna. I, th I, think, I think a well-made lasagna what? is a thing of incredible beauty. Yeah. <laughs> And also, I can make it, which is why it's my favourite. Okay. One of the things that I actually learnt to cook, which I feel like is the thing that I'm best at, is actually a Mexican dish, which I'm going to pronounce wrong, so I'm going to actually just say what it is in English, and so maybe you can tell me how to pronounce it. It's like a slow-cooked uh, pork with, like, uh, orange and, like, ajiote paste, is it? Ah, cochinita pibil. Yes. Yeah. And, like, you marinate it for, like, 24 hours, and it's so good with, like, guacamole and chips. I love it. Uh, no, I don't believe in God. No, no. Still. I, I don't. No, none of us, you know, are very religious traditionally. I think, um, I think holy fire is something that summed up the sort of aesthetic, aesthetic with like a sort of am, ambiguity to it. Spirit, like it's, it's like a spiritual ambiguity. I think the name, which I think does justice to the fe yeah. feel of the record. We like religious imagery and like the power of religious uh, thought, but we definitely don't believe in God. Loads of guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Mezcal. Uh, yeah, I think of food, man. Yeah. Mexican food is the best. We've had some pretty wild nights out in Mexico City as well. Um, I nearly got lost. Like, I didn't know where, where like, I, I didn't have the name of the hotel we were staying at. And it was, like, four o'clock in the morning. And, and you couldn't I, speak Spanish. And couldn't couldn't speak money. Spanish, didn't have any money. And I just, like, had to get in a taxi and just get them to take me to the airport. Because I knew that the hotel was next to the airport. And then... Luckily, I found. Well, luckily, we drove past the hotel. I was like, yeah, "Stop, stop, stop!" But I thought the guy punched you. Oh no, that was that was in oh, Argentina. Was this is oh, that was Argentina. Yeah, yeah, he got but... punched by a taxi driver in Argentina because well, he, he didn't speak. He didn't speak Spanish. He didn't have any money, and he didn't know where he was going. Yeah, the taxi driver was just like. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. He didn't like me at all. Uh, <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> uh, Kendrick Lamar, I think is uh, is awesome. His uh, new record. Um, Good Kid, Bad City is really good. I mean, it's 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 a rap record, but I think it's really interesting. Um, Jaguar Ma. Jaguar Ma, friends so, from Australia. We toured with them in Europe just now. Their record's coming out in a few months, I think. Yeah, yeah, they're really cool.